Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I also want to acknowledge the Earthly Mother, who is Wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson today and gives us a more uh, deep and th um, thoughtful understanding of the uh, times of the past, times of the present, and the things that are soon to come on the earth. Coming to you guys with a very late video. This uh, information has been on, put on me by the Most High and the Holy Spirit for the last couple days. I was gonna wait for another day or two in order to make this video, but this evening, it was kind of put on my heart to uh, make it now because this information is so vital that it needs to um, be presented to the to the people as soon as possible. Especially after seeing the um, the events in Paris on the fifteenth, and seeing the uh, the steeple fall over just like it did in uh, I Pet Goat 2. And, you know, the signaling that the Most High is now making that we are at the end of the reign of Esau and the Gentiles. And today, with, with the information I'm going to bring to you, you're going to see how the Most High is bringing the two sticks of the northern and southern kingdom back together again. He's going to be doing that right now through our books and information and bringing the puzzle back into, uh, back into completion so we can get full clarity as to what was the uh, Most High's mission and how he was going to accomplish his mission through our captivities and how um, he used the other nations to hide our information, to hide our books. Well, pretty much, they were pretty much just stewards of our records until it was time for us to complete our last 400 years of captivity that he was going to give our records back to us. And the Holy Spirit was going to guide us on how to put everything back together again in order to give the true understanding of the gospel, of the good news for us, as well as to the select Gentiles that the Most High has chosen to show mercy to. We're going to be getting into the book of Nephi, chapter 13. And what you're going to see is that in one chapter, it's going to show you pretty much the last 400 years of our captivity. In one chapter, it's all going to be condensed into just one chapter. And you're going to see how all of the um, prophecies that the Most High made about what was going to happen to us in this last 400 years was going to play out. And when I was reading this the first time, it blew my mind. Because once you start to put it together with the scriptures that we have had through the, with the Bible, as well as historical information, as well as these other hidden texts, you're going to have your mind blown as well. It's just absolutely amazing. And once you get done with this video, you're going to see how close we are to the end. And I think what we saw on Monday was a signaling that we are at the end, that their fake Christianity has ran its course. And to see people's um, reactions to uh, what happened on Monday was very telling because the people of this world can just uh, gloss over the fact that that's exactly what they did 
for 400 years when they came to our lands. When they came over here, they raped, robbed, murdered, burned, looted, destroyed everything that we had. And they don't even acknowledge it even to this day. But when they deal with one little bit of adversity, they want the entire world to come together and feel their pain. But that's just the way that they're wired. But we're going to see, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you today how the Most High had already planned all this out. And I think your mind is going to be just as blown once we're done with this video this evening. Because we are now at the end. Guaranteed. We are at the end of Esau's reign as well as the Gentiles. And the Most High is about to restore his covenant that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to get into Nephi, first Nephi, chapter 13. We're going to read just one chapter and we're going to, and we're going to compare it with scripture as well as with historical facts. And you're going to see your mind is going to be blown as to what you're going to see tonight. Here we go. There's a little synopsis before we read this, but Nephi says, sees, uh, this is chapter 13. Nephi sees in a vision, the church of the devil set up among the Gentiles, the discovery and coloniz colonizing of America, the loss of many plain and precious parts of the Bible, the resultant state of Gentile apostasy, the restoration of the gospel, the coming forth of Latter-day Scripture, and the building up of Zion. This was written about 600 to 592 BC. So this was written over 2,000 years ago. Okay, here we go. Let me get my notes together. So I got everything ready to go. All right, we're gonna read uh, verses one through three. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, look, and I looked and beheld many nations and kingdoms. And the angel said unto me, what beholdest thou? And I said, I behold many nations and kingdoms. And he said unto me, these are the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles. Okay. All right. And it came to pass that I saw among the nations of the Gentiles, the formation of a great church. And the angel said unto me, behold, the formation of a church, which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of God, yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. Okay, so this church is going to be responsible for slaying the saints of the Most High. So slaying the Hebrews, the Israelites, torturing them and putting them into captivity. Now, if we go back into history, I've done a video on this and so other brothers have too about Dumb Diversus, which pretty much gives uh, pretty much uh, the Edomites the justification to enslave our people until something changes for pretty much forever. And that's their goal, was to enslave our people, to destroy our people, and to take our land and our resources. So that's what this church here is set up for. And we know, if we go to, if we read six, and it came to pass that I beheld this great and abominable church. And I saw the devil, that he was the founder of it. All right? So I'm going to be kind of going back and forth with some of these pictures and then back to the reading, okay? 
So we know this here is the uh, picture of the uh, church that just burned a couple days ago. Pictures here before it burned. All right, this is a church that was set up by the devil in order to torture and to enslave and to kill the saints of the Most High. That's been their main aim ever since their inception. Now, as we read, you're going to start to see a lot of characteristics. And, you know, you start looking at the history. You know, the Pope had the blessing. They sent the priests over here to convert our people into their religion. And if they didn't convert, they were killed. If they didn't convert, they were sold into slavery. Our women were raped, children sold, raped, thrown to the dogs, men forced to work to, de to, their, to, their, to death. Okay, so we got right there. So th we're gonna continue reading because there's even more characteristics of this church. Let's go ahead and read um, verse 7. And I also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twine linen and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets, and the fine twine linen, and the precious clothing, and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church. So that is what this church was desiring. Gold, silver, all the precious things of this world. Is that not what they sent um, the um, Spanish invaders over here to find? They sent them, sent them to find gold and silver, all the precious things of this world was what this church was set up for. And that's exactly what they did. You know, on the second voyage of Columbus, they had 17 ships filled with 1,200 soldiers that was sent here. It was pretty much a military expedition to uh, look for gold. Supposedly it was to convert the natives to Christianity, but the vast majority was looking for gold and silver. And that's what was actually prophesied right here, that this church, that's what they were going to do. And if that's going to be their God, and I'm going to read an excerpt from the American Holocaust, where it talks about one of the natives who ran away from uh, Hispaniola, and I think he ran to Cuba. And it's a famous story about this native here. His name was uh, Hatue, and he talks about what the gold, what the god of these Spanish invaders is. Okay, here we go. It says uh, it's on page sixty-nine of American Holocaust. Some desperate Hispaniola natives fled to other islands. One of these cacique was a cacique named Hatue, brought with him to Cuba as many of his uh, surviving people as he could and what little gold that they possessed. Once there in a place called Punta Maisi, he assembled his followers together and displayed for them the treasures that they had, explaining that this was what the Spanish troops were after, that these apparently were objects of worship to the murderous invaders, whereupon to protect these people from the greed and savagery of these vile strangers, he threw the gold to the bottom of a nearby river. It didn't work. The Spanish found Hatue and his people, killed most of them, enslaved the others, and condemned their leader to be burned alive. Reportedly, as they were trying, um, trying him to the stake, uh, tying him to the stake, a Franciscan friar urged him to take Jesus to his heart so that his soul might go to heaven rather than descend into hell. Hatue replied that if heaven was where the Christians went, he would rather go to hell. 
The massacres continued. Columbus remained ill for months while his soldiers wandered freely. More than 50,000 natives were reported dead from these encounters by the time the admiral had recovered from his sickness. So, the natives knew that gold and silver was the god of the Spanish. And that's what drove them. That's what they were after. And that was something here that was prophesied thousands of years ago. Okay? So let's go ahead and nine. We'll actually just read eight and nine right here. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twine linen and the precious clothing and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church. And also, for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity. So the rest of the world was praising these um, this church for what they did to God's chosen people. This is the church, the abominable church that was set up to attack our people. And this right here was their God. Money. It says, when you realize the dollar sign is the serpent and the staff. Okay. That right there was the God of this, is, is the God of this abominable church. Okay. Now we're going to continue reading. Remember this picture while I'm reading the next part. This is very, very important. Okay. It says, and it came to pass that I looked and beheld many waters and they divided the Gentiles from the seed of my brethren. So just like the United States would, you know, they had the uh, comfort of the seas when they come, when the, you know, the Edomites took over in order to keep their enemies away from them. You know, that's what kept them safe during all these other world wars because they didn't get ravaged because the oceans kept them safe. That's actually the, um, that was actually the comfort that was given to the God's chosen people because that was part of their covenant, that, they, that the oceans would keep the Gentiles away from them. That was all part of the covenant to keep the Gentiles away as long as we kept the commandments. But if we didn't, the Most High was going to allow the Gentiles to come to our lands and overrun them and put us into slavery. And that's what we're going to be getting into. So these oceans were set up to be a barrier between us, his chosen people, and all the Gentiles. Okay, let's go back over here so you guys can follow along. We're on verse 11. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the seed of thy brethren. So now the Most High was upset with us, and he was going to bring the wrath on us because we broke the commandments. Now check this part. I was going to be, it's going to blow you away right here. Uh, 12. And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the spirit of God that came down and wrought upon the man. And he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land. There's your Columbus right there. The, the spirit was sent to him in order to help him find the lands over here because that was part of the chastisement that he, the most high was going to bring. You see that right there? He sent a spirit to work with Columbus in order to get him to come over here to the promised land. And if you actually have watched that movie, 1492, it talks, there's a scene in there where Columbus is using um, second Esdras to uh, find the tribes that were brought over here. But now, as you can see, the Most High talks about sending a spirit, the spirit of the Most High, in order to help Columbus find the lands over here. 
That's why it seemed like he was just possessed trying to find these lands. He knew they were over here, but that's because the Most High sent a spirit to help him find the lands over here. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Let's read that uh, 12 again. And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. So that was a man that was over he, over in the um, Europe, Europe on the other side of the Atlantic. Okay. And I beheld the spirit of God that came down and wrought upon the man. That spirit was sent down to work with him. And he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land. So this is telling you right now that the lands over here were considered the promised lands. And Columbus was trying to find the promised lands. He was trying to find Eden. He was trying to find um, where Solomon's gold mines. He was trying to find all that, all that stuff because he knew it was all over here. He was trying to find that the old world. He knew it was over here. And that's where he was, that's what he was doing. Okay, 13. And it came to pass that I beheld the Spirit of God that it wrought upon the Gentiles, and they went forth out of captivity unto up upon the many waters. So this here is talking more so about Esau. If you read about the blessings of Esau, that he was going to be in captivity and he was going to break the yoke off of his neck, and then he was going to pretty much have his blessing. That's what this is referring to. In fact, let me just get that and read it real quick. Okay. Genesis. Chapter 27. Let's say it starts around 39. Let's see here. Uh, nope. Yeah. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Okay, hold on. Yeah, fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So he was going to get his blessing to be the fatness of the earth. And the fatness of the earth was our promised land, the lands that he had already given us. Okay, and let's go to 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So he's going to come out of slavery and then he's going to be living by the sword and he's going to live by the fatness of the earth. And that's exactly what this is saying. And that's exactly what has happened. So now let's check it, verse 14. And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise. And I beheld the wrath of God that it was upon the seed of my brethren and they were scattered before the Gentiles and were smitten. Okay. Let me make sure I got all that right there. All right. So as you can see, what let's continue. Check this out. Verse 15. And I beheld the spirit of the Lord, and it was upon the Gentiles, and they did prosper and obtain the land of, for their inheritance. And I beheld that they were white and exceedingly fair and beautiful, like unto my people before they were slain. So it was saying that these uh, white Gentiles were gonna be here, overrunning the land of inheritance of the Hebrews. You know, and like I said, some of these things, cause talk about like the, we were white also, I'm not gonna get into all that. Um, but because they can always manipulate some of the words here and there like they do even do in our own scriptures. OK, but the main point is that the Gentiles, because the spirit was going to be given to them in order to be able to do these things. So let's read that one more time. And I beheld the spirit of the Lord that it was upon the Gentiles and they did prosper and obtain the land for their inheritance. And I beheld that they were white and exceedingly fair and beautiful, like unto my people before they were slain. So now as you can see, we have a church that was going to be set up. This church is going to be set up to enslave 
the Most High's chosen people, to torture them, to kill them. That's exactly what happened. Their God was going to be gold and money and things of this world. That's exactly what's happened. That once the Most High had wrath set up for us, he sent the Spirit to help Columbus find our lands. That's exactly what happened. Then the Gentiles were going to overrun our land, our land of inheritance. That's exactly what happened. And for a time, they were going to be in control of our lands. That's exactly what's happened. So again, here was a church that just got burned down, part, some of it. There it is right there. This church, it's a abominable church that sits on many waters. So it's all over the world. There it is again with the money being their God. The waters, the ocean being used to keep the other nations away from our lands of inheritance. That's exactly what, what, it, what happened. Now, we talked about how they put us into slavery. Many people are always talking about, you know, uh, Deuteronomy 2068. Like, the only way they could, that this can be fulfilled is from Africa to here. This will show you right now that they were doing that over here, moving us from place to place. Because they killed off most of the people on Hispaniola, they went to different islands and were taking people off the different islands and taking them to Hispaniola and to different islands in order to work in the Inca encomiendas. Let's read this real quick at the top. With the Caribbeans, millions of natives people uh, thereby effectively liquidated in barely a quarter of a century because they killed off so many of them, okay? Forced through the murderous uh, vortex of Spanish savagery and greed, the slavers turned next to the smaller islands off the mainland coast. The first raid took place in 1515, when natives from Guanaja and the Bay Islands of, off Honduras were captured and taken to forced labor camps in depopulated Cuba. Other slave expeditions uh, followed, and by 1525, when Cortez arrived in the region, all the Bay Islands themselves had been entirely shorn of their inhabitants. Okay? So that's exactly what they were just going and getting people and taking them from one island to another. And you're never going to see your homeland again, just like it says in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. No, it can just continue. In order to exploit most fully the land and its populace and to satisfy the increasingly dangerous and rebellion uh, organizing ambitions of his well-armed Spanish troops, Columbus instituted a program called the Repartimiento or Indian Grants, later referred to in a revised version as a system of encomiendas. This uh, was a dividing up not of the land, but of entire peoples and communities and the bestowal of them upon a would-be Spanish master. The master was free to do what he wished with his people, have them plant, have them work in the mines, have them do anything, as Carl Sauer puts it, without limit or benefit of tenure. Now remember how they said they, would not, um, get, they wouldn't care about old people, men, women. They wouldn't have respect for anyone in the book of Baruch. That's, this is what it's talking about. Let's continue. The result was an even greater increase in cruelty and a magnification of the firestorm of human devastation, caring only for short-term material wealth that could be wrenched up from the earth. The Spanish overlords on Hispaniola removed their slaves to unfamiliar locales. See how they just moved them from place to place so they would not know their lands. They would not be able to run, run away or escape because they didn't know where they were at. The roads to the mines were like ant hills, Las Casas, recalled, deprived them of food and forced them to work until they dropped. At the mines and fields in which they labored, the Indians were herded together under the supervision of Spanish overseers, known as mineros, and the mines and instancieros on the plantations, who uh, treated the Indians with such rigor and inhumanity that they seemed the very ministers of hell driving them day and night with beatings, kicks, lashes, and blows, and calling them no sweeter names than dogs. Needless to say, some Indians attempted to escape from this. They were hunted down with mastiffs. Okay, those are those big, huge dogs, okay? When found, if not torn apart on the spot, they were returned, and a show trial was held for them. 
and for the edification of other Indians who were made to stand and watch. The escapees were, and you can read the bottom right there on your own. So there's your Deuteronomy 2868. Yes, some were brought from other parts of the world. Some were brought from Africa. Come to find out that we actually had lands, only the lands here is only maybe half of what the Most High had given us. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. We also have other lands and other parts of the world as well. Okay? So we'll get into that a little bit later. But, you know, I'm not saying that the Americas is the only place the Most High gave us. This is one of the places that he's given us, but he gave us pretty much half of the world. And the Americas make up a little bit more than a quarter. So we have other lands and other places as well. You start looking around at other beautiful places that have hot and cold weather. Many of those places are also ours as well. But we'll continue with that a little bit later. And this was, you know, the Most High giving Esau his blessing, giving him his opportunity for glory, looking for gold. He was giving him his time. He was giving him his blessing. That's what the Most High was doing because, you know, he was given his blessing, the fatness of the earth. So he was given our land for a time. And that's going to be really, you're going to see it plain in your face shortly when we keep reading what's going on here in this chapter. There's not going to be any doubt that that's what the Most High did. He gave him his opportunity. He gave him his run, his last run. And then the Most High is going to put everything back in order, which is what you're getting ready to start to see. Okay, getting a bunch of uh, notifications here, as you guys can hear. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. So Esau gets his run. Esau gets his manifest destiny. He used use that as his uh, reasoning for all the stealing of land and the raping, robbing, murder, and stealing of everything, torturing. They had their manifest destiny, which was true. The Most High gave him his run. The Most High was with him for a time. And then he was actually, Esau was lifted up above the other Gentiles. And I'm going to skip through 15, but you can actually see it. Um, I wish you might... In chapter 16 through about 18 or 19, in this chapter, if you just look it up yourself, you can read it. It talks about how the Most High actually um, had Esau was fighting with other um, Gentile nations, and the Most High was with Esau and allowed him to defeat the other Gentile nations as well. And, he, and for a time to have his time on top. And we know, like I said, Esau's on top of the whole world because the Most High gave him his time, gave him his blessing. That was all part of the prophecy as well. Okay. Now we're going to continue. We're going to skip over to verse 20. Actually, let's go. Let's start at 19. Well, let's go to 18 so I can show you how the Most High you know, gave him the power. The Most High was with Esau at this time because he was giving him his blessing. And I beheld that the power of the Most High was with him, was, was with them, and also that the wrath of God was upon all those that were gathered together against them in battle, or to battle. And I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles that had gone out of captivity were delivered by the power of God out of the hands of all other nations. So again, Esau broke that yoke, got his time. And he got empowered above all the other Gentile nations. Okay? That's exactly what happened. Okay? After, what, in the 1400s when, you know, Spain and uh, came out of, uh, started getting control again. All right? And the other, and the other, Gent uh, any other uh, Edomite nations got empowered. This would happen. They were just running around taking lands because it was their time. Okay, but that was because the Most High gave them the power. 20. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that they did prosper in the land, 
and I beheld a book, and it was carried forth among them. This is very important. Okay? The Bible. Okay? And this is going to explain it right here. What this book is that they're carrying around. The Edomites were taking a book all over the place and using that as justification for everything that they did. Again, you're going to see this, this is systematic. This is prophecy. This is exactly what happened written thousands of years ago. Let's continue with 21. And the angel said unto me, Knowest thou the meaning of the book? And I said unto him, I know not. And he said, Behold, it proceedeth out of the mouth of a Jew. And I, Nephi, beheld it. And he said unto me, The book that thou beholdest is a record of the Jews, which contains the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made unto the house of Israel. And it also containeth many of the prophecies of the holy prophets. And it is a record like unto the engravings, which are upon the plates of brass, save there are not so many. Nevertheless, they contain the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made unto the house of Israel, wherefore they are of great worth unto the Gentiles. Okay, so they have the, they have the Bible. And this is telling you that this Bible comes from the Jews. These, these, you know, these scrolls come from the mouth of the Jews, of the Israelites, the southern kingdom, namely, okay? And it contains the prophecies of the holy prophets. And it is a record like unto the engravings which are upon the plates of brass because the, the northern kingdom has their prophecies written on these brass plates. Okay, save there are not so many. Nevertheless, they contain the covenants of the Lord. The covenants that he made with our people are in here. So now check this out. So now you see, that's exactly what happened. They came with the Bible and they used that as justification for um, when they came over here to our lands. They used that as a justification for the things that they were doing. They said they were coming to spread Christianity. So they had this Bible and they were using that as a justification to come over here. Is that not true? Did that not happen? Yes, it did happen. Okay. Let's continue. Now it's going to get even better. I mean, this stuff is just so explicit and straight in your face. You're going to be like, I mean, like everything. 24. And the angel of the Lord said unto me, Thou hast beheld that the book proceeded forth from the mouth of a Jew. And when it proceeded forth from the mouth of a Jew, it contained the fullness of the gospel of the Lord. So it had all the good news when it was first written. Okay. Okay. Of whom the 12 apostles bear record. And they bear record according to the truth, which is in the Lamb of God. So originally, this the Bible, when it was written by the Jews, you know, Southern Kingdom, it had the whole truth in it. Okay? But what happened? Wherefore, go 25, wherefore, these things go forth from the Jews in purity unto the Gentiles, according to the truth, which is in the Most High. So at first, originally, the information that was going to be spread out to the Gentiles was going to be the whole truth, so that the Gentiles could get a, a correct understanding of the will of the Most High. But is that really what happened? Let's continue. 26. And after they go forth by the hand of the 12 apostles of the Lamb from the Jews unto the Gentiles, thou seest the formation of that great and abominable church. So after the 12 apostles wrote their testaments and after they passed away, then this church pops up. This the abominable church pops up. Okay, let's continue. Which is most abominable above all other churches. For behold, they have taken away from the gospel of the Lamb many parts which are plain and most precious, and also many covenants of the Lord have they taken away. So this church, 
after the 12 apostles have written all their information, try to give it to the Gentiles, give it to the world, give them the truth, this church pops up. And this church pops up and takes away many of the books and many, much of the information that uh, is needed to go out to the rest of the world. Did that not happen? Was there not a council set up who decided which books were good, which ones were bad? And then the ones that they, they, they deemed, you know, not fit, they hid. Or they killed people who had these books. Is, that not, is this not what happened? Let's continue. 27. And all this have they done that they might pervert the right ways of the Lord, that they might blind the eyes and harden the hearts of the children of men. So because the Edomites can be saved, they took away the information from everyone. They took the information away from the other Gentiles. They took the truth away and hid it away. This is all written thousands of years ago. And this is exactly what has happened. Look at 28. Wherefore? Thou seest that after the book hath gone forth through the hands of the great and abominable church, that there are many plain and precious things taken away from the book, which is the book of the Lamb of God. So when it left the Hebrews' hands, it had all the information that was necessary that the Most High wanted to impart to the whole world, to the Gentiles. But the church, the abominable church, got their hand on this our information, our books, and then took away and hid much of the information. So then they started taking out their own version of the Bible, which was missing many of the books and much of the information. See how that works? That's exactly what happened. Let's go to uh, 29. And after these plain and precious things were taken away, it goeth forth unto all the nations of the Gentiles. And after it goeth forth unto all the nations of the Gentiles, yea, even across the many waters, which thou hast seen with the Gentiles, which have gone forth out of captivity. Thou seest because of the um, many plain and precious things which have been taken out, hold on, out of, taken out of the book, okay, let me continue here. So you have the Council of Nicaea, AD 325, where the Romans decided which books were good, which ones were bad. But of course, they don't have any, no one gave them, you know, they don't have any authority to do this. But this was already, this was already prophesied. This is exactly what they were going to do. That these men, these Edomites, were going to get together and take out the precious information so that the uh, rest of the Gentiles could not ex get the truth. Amazing. This is all written down. This is all just one chapter. And then they hide all this information, just like this right here. Vatican City holds 50 miles of ancient documents hidden from the public. No browsing is allowed. Okay? All right, right here. Here we go. So we got up top. Uh, let's continue with a book. Well, let me read the last part of there, okay? Because of the ma uh, many plain and precious things which have been taken out of the book, which were plain unto the understanding of the children of men. So the Hebrews under understood exactly what was supposed to be in here. And they were trying to actually go out and give the truth. It says, but according to the plainness which is in the Lamb of God, because of these things which are taken away out of the gospel of the Lamb, an exceedingly great many do stumble, yea, insomuch that Satan hath great power over them. All right. See how I mean, it's all playing out absolutely to the T, just like this chapter says. Now we have a huge part right here. 
want you guys to understand that this is, I've been talking about how this is our land, how the Most High gave us this land, and how the other nations, you know, were given authority over for a time. So when it, it was taken from us, it was given to them, so it was like it wasn't our land anymore because it was given to them for a time. This, these couple, next couple verses explains it perfectly. Here we go. Nevertheless, thou beholdest that the Gentiles who have gone forth out of captivity, keep saying that because it's making a, a distinction between all the Gentiles. It's not all of them. It's these are talking about the Edomites. Okay. We have gone forth out of captivity and have been lifted up by the power of the Most High above all other nations, okay? Esau was lifted up above all other nations, correct? Upon the face of the land, which is choice above all other lands. That's our our, our promised land, is the choice land above all, all other lands, okay? All right? So upon the face of the land, which is choice above all other lands, which is the land that the Lord God hath covenanted with, the, with thy father, that his seed should have for the land of their inheritance. Wherefore, thou seest that the Lord God will not suffer that the Gentiles will utterly destroy the mixture of thy seed, which are among thy brethren. So as you can see, he gave these Edomites our land for a time. But this land is the land that is covenanted with our forefathers with our seed, it's, gonna, it's, it's our land, but they had control of it for a time. You guys see that? Okay. Now you go to 31, neither will he suffer that the Gentiles shall destroy the seed of thy brethren. Neither will the Lord God suffer that the Gentiles shall forever remain in that awful state of blindness, which thou beholdest, they are in because of the plain and most precious parts of the gospel of the Lamb, which have been kept back by the abominable church, whose formation thou hast seen. So he's going to have mercy on us as well as select Gentiles, because the Edomites have kept this information from the other, from the other nations, from the Gentiles. You know, I've, I've, there's a verse in the Nag Hammadi that talks about how, you know, just because they're not allowed to get this information, they're not allowed to actually you know, have a mercy, they don't want mercy for anyone. So they hide this information. And that's exactly what has happened. But the Most High is going to, you know, he's going to remedy this situation. But that 30 is very, very, that verse 30 is very, very important. I want to read that one more time. Nevertheless, thou beholdest that the Gentiles who have gone forth out of captivity and have been lifted up by the power of God above all other nations. Esau lifted up and given his blessing, fattest of the earth, upon the face of the land, which is choice above all. Okay, so he's here in the best lands, above choice above all other lands, which is the land that the Lord hath covenanted with thy father, that his seed should have for the land of their inheritance. This choice land is given to the, the Israelites. Okay, wherefore thou seest that the Lord God will not suffer that the Gentiles will utterly destroy the mixture of thy seed. So not, they're not going to be able to destroy all of our people, which are among thy brethren. Neither will he suffer that the Gentiles shall destroy the seed of thy brethren. He would, like I said, the Gentiles will not be able to destroy all of us. Okay. And he's going to have pity on us as well as select Gentiles because of what the abominable church has done. Okay. So this is a, a, another beautiful picture of our lands that the Most High has given us. And now it starts to make a lot more sense when you see this one. I've used this many times. Jeremiah 5 and 19. And when thy people ask, why has the Lord our God done all this to us? You will tell them as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land. So we served foreign gods here on these lands. So now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. So these other nations were sent over here. Remember, the Most High gave that spirit to Columbus to find our lands over here. And they were going to take it from us for a time. And we we're going to serve the foreigners in our own land that is not ours. OK. 
Okay. Now, if you take a look, this is also from the American Holocaust, just to show you that the Most High, you know, I'll, I'll might have to make another video on this, but the Americas only makes up a, uh, 25 for, a little bit more than 25% of the land surface. We were given about 50% of the land surface. So therefore we have about another 20, 20, 25% of land that's spread out all over the world. It's not just here. So if you look here, it says, uh, Shimland is both hot and cold. Combined, North America and South America cover an area of 16 million square miles, more than a quarter of the land surface of the globe. Okay, to its first human inhabitants tens of thousands of years ago, this enormous domain they had discovered was literally a world unto itself, a world of miles high mountains and vast fertile prairies of desert shrublands and dense tropical rainforests, a frigid Arctic tundra and hot murky swamps of deep and fecund uh, river valleys and sparkling water lakes of canopied woodlands of savannah, uh, savannas and steeps and thousands upon thousands of miles of a magnificent ocean coast. There were places where it almost never rained and places where it virtually never stopped. There were places where the temperature reached 130 degrees Fahrenheit and places where it dropped to 80 degrees below zero. But in all these places under the, these conditions, eventually some native people made their homes. Like I said, Shem gets hot and cold. Ham gets the hot lands. And uh, Japheth gets the cold lands. All right. So I just wanted to share that real quick. Let's see here. Let me finish up. Last part here. Let's look at a 30, 33. Wherefore, saith the Lamb of God, I will be merciful unto the Gentiles, unto the visiting of the remnant of the house of Israel in great judgment. <clears throat> and it came to pass. Let me, just, let me make sure I got this right here. And it came to pass that the angel of the Lord spake unto me, saying, Behold, saith the Lamb of God, after I have visited the remnant of the house of Israel, and this remnant of whom I speak is the seed of thy father, wherefore, after I have visited them in judgment, and smitten them by the hand of the Gentiles, and after the Gentiles do stumble exceedingly because of the most plain and precious parts of the gospel of the Lamb, which have been kept back by the abominable church, which is the mother of harlots, saith the Lamb, I will be merciful unto the Gentiles in that day, insomuch that I will bring forth unto them in mine own power much of my gospel, which shall be plain and precious, saith the Lamb. For behold, saith the Lamb, I will manifest myself unto thy seed, that they shall write many things, which I shall minister unto them. Okay, hold on. Which shall be plain and precious, and after thy seed shall be destroyed and dwindle in unbelief, and also the seed of thy brethren uphold these things shall be hid up to come forth unto the Gentiles by the gift of power of the Lamb. And in them shall be written my gospel with the Lamb, the saith the Lamb, and my rock and my salvation. And blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion at that day, for they shall have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. And if they endure unto the end, they shall be lifted up at the last day. Okay, so again, lands there, right here, right there. Okay, We're almost done. I want to make sure I'm touching all the points because like I said, there's a whole lot of information here. All right, let's continue. Uh, in the last day, and shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. And whoso shall publish peace, yea, tidings of great joy, how beautiful upon the mountains shall they be. Okay. And it came to pass that I be, uh, beheld the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the book of the Lamb of God, which proceeded from um, forth from the mouth of the Jew, that it came forth from the Gentiles unto the remnant of the seed of my brethren. Okay. So the Bible is going to be given back to us from the, the Gentiles are going to be giving it back to us. It's like the Gentiles were just used to pretty much hold our records for us 
until we get finished up our um, punishment. And then once our punishment was complete, these records were going to be given back to us. And then with the Holy Spirit, we were going to be able to put this the true gospel back together again in order to um, call back our people as well as the select Gentiles as well. 39, very important right here. Something I take a lot of flack for from quite a few other people. And after it had come forth unto them, I beheld other books which came forth by the power of the Lamb from the Gentiles unto them, unto the convincing of the Gentiles and the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the Jews who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, that the records of the prophets and of the twelve apostles and of the Lamb are true. So at the end, <clears throat> other books were going to be given back to the Most High's chosen people, the remnant, and they were going to be able to put this information back together. Let's read that 39 again because it's very important. And after it had come forth unto them, I beheld other books which came forth by the power of the Lamb. Okay, so the Most High has given these books back to our people. From the Gentiles unto them, unto his chosen people. So they were like used again to hold our records till the end for us to put them back together. Okay, unto them, unto the convincing of the Gentiles and the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the Jews who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, that the records of the prophets and of the twelve apostles of the Lamb are true. This is like the bringing together, if you look, of, of the people. This is like the bringing together of the sticks of Judah and Israel. If you look at the bottom, you can see in 39C, it's referencing Ezekiel 37 and 17. Let's get that real quick. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37. Seventeen, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. It's the it's like the bringing back of the book of the given pretty much of the of the southern kingdom and their records, putting together the, the records with the northern kingdom, in order to bring get a true understanding of the Most High's plan. The Bible is primarily discussed, uh, discussing the uh, occurrences or the things that happened with the southern kingdom, Benjamin, Judah, Levi. But we didn't have the uh, records of the northern kingdom and what happened to them after they were taken into the Assyrian captivity. Well, now we know that the whole last 400-year captivity was more so referencing what's going to happen over here in the choice lands, in the Americas. Those are the things that were not written in the Bible, things that were hidden. But now that we know that the Northern Kingdom, well, you know, the, the Southern Kingdom and Northern Kingdom were going to be in captivity together. We know that didn't happen in the uh, first, uh, what is it, in the um, captivities of uh, the Babylonian captivity, Persians and Medes, Greeks and Romans. That was predominantly Southern Kingdom. So this gives information about how we're going to be um, put into another captivity again at the end. And this gives more understanding of how that was going to happen. It also makes reference to there at the, on Ezekiel reading 15 through 20. So let me read that real quick. Ezekiel 37, 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them to uh, one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, 
even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereupon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. This is bringing together Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, bringing together our records, bringing together the information of what has happened to us and what the Most High's plan was. That's what you're seeing now. That's all part of prophecy. And it was said also that this was going to happen in 2nd Ezra, chapter 14. If you look at 45, uh, 44, in 40 days, they wrote 204 books. And it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. So there's your Bible right there. And it was going to be spread, but it was not going to have all the information in it because the abominable church was going to hide a bunch of the information. 46, but keep the 70 last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. So he's going to deliver these last books to the remnant of his seed. Not all, but the ones that he's chosen. 47, for in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of of knowledge and those are going to be the ones that are going to put the God the true gospel back together that he's going to use okay let me finish up real quick 40 and the angel spake unto me saying these last records which thou hast uh, seen among the Gentiles shall establish the truth of the first which are of the twelve apostles of the Lamb and shall make known the plain and precious things that have been taken away from them, and shall make known to all kindreds, tongues, and people that the Lamb of God is the Son of the Eternal Father, and the Savior of the world, and that all men must come unto him, or they cannot be saved. All right, I'll, have, I'll leave the rest for you guys to read on your own. Okay? But I hope that... Um, this lesson helps to give an understanding of what sometimes we have to kind of get this information and then look back and piece it all together to see that where we are the it's amazing because if you go through this video and you start to look at uh, other scripture you'll start to see how it all fits I'm going to have to make a, ne a next video on uh, what's coming next because there's actually even more information, but I couldn't put it all in one video because I don't want it to be like a two hour video. But it's just amazing because the Most High made a covenant to keep us separated. We broke the covenant. The Most High empowered Esau and again, the spirit was working with Esau, led him over here. And when he opened up the floodgates, brought all the Gentiles over here. They overran our land. They used their abominable church to take our records and, st and hide information in order that the other Gentiles would not get the true information. That's why they're gonna say at the end, our fathers have inherited lies because the church kept all this information from them. We were gonna serve our punishment. And at the end of that punishment, he was going to raise up a remnant of our people, give them these other books, and they were going to put the true gospel back together. He's going to have mercy on his chosen people, the ones that he's chosen to save, the remnant. And he's going to have a chosen remnant of, of uh, Gentiles as well. That's where we're at right now. That's why you saw what you saw on Monday when you saw the steeple falling over because that abominable church has ran its course and the most high is already bringing judgment. But I think we're going to start to see things accelerate quickly and the restoration of his people is well on its way. All praises to the most high Yahweh.
acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.